Item number SCP-507 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-507 is allowed free roam of the facility, obviously barring anything that would breach security or safety protocols. Anytime SCP-507 leaves its private quarters, it must be accompanied by an agent, mostly at this point to make sure it does not shift without the facility's knowledge. SCP-507 should not be physically touched if there has been more than two weeks since its last shift. The risk inherent in disobeying this protocol makes the action its own punishment, should the issue of disciplinary measures ever come up. When SCP-507 undergoes a shift, faculty will be informed to keep an eye out for its eventual reappearance. It also has a tracking device implanted into it, and a daily signal check should verify whether or not SCP-507 has returned from its trip. If it reappears in or nearby the facility, SCP-507 will return to its quarters on its own, otherwise a retrieval team of three plainclothes agents may be sent to provide transportation back. Upon successful return, SCP-507 can be the subject of various physical tests up to two weeks after each shift. It is worth noting that SCP-507 is allowed a computer with an internet connection via a proxy which strictly limits what information can be uploaded, and to where, in its room, and may petition to use Meet With Act as a test subject for safe or Euclid SCPs that do not affect mental functions negatively or carry an infectious trait. This is a result of SCP-507's persistently clean record, and the implication that if SCP-507 was ever going to be a security leak, it would have used its faux teleportation powers to do so already. It is also worth considering that SCP-507 is actually below average in most physical traits, and that in even worst case scenarios any SCP agent would be more than capable of carrying out a termination order. Description. SCP-507 is apparently a Caucasian male with blonde hair and green eyes, sporting no other outstanding characteristics besides being somewhat overweight and speaking with a vague accent of disputable origin. Although SCP-507 has an already established name due to its unremarkable upbringing, it seems to find entertainment in forcing those it meets to give it a nickname in lieu of divulging its information. Thus, SCP-507 will now respond to the names Tommy, Steve, Bruto, Guy, Houdini, and Grabnock the Destroyer. SCP-507 was originally recovered from the Asylum when standard surveillance following repeated successful escape attempts brought its abilities to light. All records of this incident were confiscated, and SCP-507 was taken into custody under the pretense of moving it to a more secure facility. The original theory was that SCP-507 possessed some form of teleportation ability, as it would suddenly disappear and eventually reappear in a different location. Subsequent interviews with the subject did verify that its abilities could be used in such a manner, but that it was merely a side effect for its main affliction. SCP-507 holds that during its periods of disappearance, it is actually displaced into a random alternate reality. The landscape generally stays the same, but the inhabitants and climate of the parallel world often do not. SCP-507 also insists that it has no control over the time and duration of these shifts. This has more or less been confirmed by the subject being known to displace at inconvenient times such as mid-sentence, while sleeping, or even while using on-site public facilities. If SCP-507 moves about in the alternate world, the eventual shift back will then place it at the corresponding area in our reality. A sample list of SCP-507's descriptions of alternate realities can be found in Document 507-00. Mentally, SCP-507 shows no large deviations from the psychological profile for a normal person. It has confessed to have always had a great interest in the paranormal and mythological, which has directly led to its eventual permission to interact with relatively harmless SCPs. SCP-507 especially enjoys meeting with other sentient SCPs, once going so far as to request a small vacation to visit SCP-082. The request was eventually granted after persistent pleading from SCP-507, and the meeting was thankfully uneventful. Document number 507-00 
a sample list of SCP-507's supposed extra-dimensional travels along with any demands made by it after returning. Subject arrived in complete darkness, leading it to assume that the current location was indoors or subterranean. After fumbling about for a possible way out, Subject heard a sound akin to a muted breathing nearby. Subject then decided to curl up in the nearest corner and wait it out instead of risking a blind confrontation with an unknown creature. Request, a standard flashlight which it now always carries on its person. Subject appeared in a replica of the facility, although apparently fallen into disuse. Further exploration led to the discovery of various corpses strewn about the area, all heavily decayed and covered in an odd type of mold. Upon noting that the corpses seemed to rhythmically expand and contract as if still breathing, Subject attempted to leave the facility. This idea was quickly discarded when it opened an exit and found that the outside world was apparently coated with the same odd growth. Request, heavy doses of voriconazole and a fungal expert to help ascertain the nature of the mold. No exact match of the described mold was found, but it was noted to share many attributes with certain types of cordyceps fungi. See Addendum 507-02. Upon reappearing, Subject was reported to mutter, So many spiders. Subject refused to elaborate. Request, a handheld firearm of any type. Request was granted under the stipulation that said firearm is specifically built to only use rubber bullets. Subject once again appeared in a pitch black location with breathing nearby. Upon turning on its flashlight, Subject was surprised by a man wearing a black business suit and sunglasses with an impossibly wide smile. Said smiling man was apparently leaning in toward SCP-507 when it turned on the light, the end result being that their faces were almost touching. Smiling Man then remarked, Back so soon? before Subject switched the light off again. Discharged all the rounds in its firearm at the general vicinity of the man, and once more curled up in the nearest corner until shifted back into our reality. Request None. Those with Level 2 security clearance may read a full list by accessing document number 507-3B. Those with level 2 forward slash 507 security clearance should also see interview 507-G for evidence of a particularly noteworthy shift. Addendum 507-00 Agent went missing on at the same time as SCP-507. A full-scale search was launched to find either of them, only for SCP-507 to appear a week later. When questioned, it said that was holding onto his shoulder when it shifted, leading to both of them to appear in an alternate dimension where During the ensuing chaos, SCP-507 lost contact with and could not relocate him before it shifted back into standard reality. A new protocol has been placed in light of this. No one is to come into physical contact with SCP-507 after two weeks following a displacement. Re-evaluation of previous incidents have shown that there has always been at least two weeks between each, so this time frame will be the only safe time to touch SCP-507 until further notice. Addendum 507-01 I don't care how much he grumbles about it. SCP-507 is not to be cleared for challenging SCP-076-2 to 50 rounds of tic-tac-toe. Just… no. Doctor. Addendum 507-02 Fungus encountered by SCP-507 seems similar to that resulting in experimentation with SCP-407. Interview 507-G Interviewed SCP-507 SCP-507 Interviewer Dr. Forward During a daily signal check for SCP-507, two independent verifications were returned. The following investigation led to the discovery of identical SCP-507 duplicates in its assigned quarters. Both apparently made their way to the room by themselves, and had spent at least half an hour conversing with each other upon meeting. 
The following interview took place between them and the first informed employee to reach their location. The duplicates have been each given an alphabetical notation for the purpose of readability. Begin log. Hey, Doc. Welcome to the party. I am afraid you are going to have to explain this to me. There's apparently more than one version of me with this problem. Should have seen this coming, honestly. There are so many ways an alternate reality could differ without affecting my personal life, you know? So which one of you is the visitor? Roughly ten seconds of silence. Is something wrong? We've actually been talking about this for a bit. Now you guys have been real nice to us. More than we might deserve, really. But we also know that this could be a rather enticing opportunity for your research department. It'd probably be best if we don't know which one of us was… temporary? Expendable. I don't know what kind of stories you two have been sharing, but our job is to secure and protect the likes of you. Perhaps this other reality has a less benign code of conduct? And perhaps I can shoot fireballs from my mouth. We don't mean to be hurtful, but this place isn't the best source of human compassion. I'm sure there's at least one person on staff who would love breaking me open in an attempt to find out how all this freaky stuff works, if it wasn't for the fact that you couldn't keep studying me afterwards. Do you have to put it like that? I have enough things to keep me awake at night. Good god, I know. Once there was this guy with a huge-ass smile. You met him too? Nearly soiled myself. I wish I was that lucky. You know, this could be interpreted as a security breach. Who's the doppelganger going to report to? Alternate SCP? I'm fairly sure there's a better chance of a meteor strike in this place than successful cross-dimensional sabotage. I've actually come across at least three dimensions where something fell from… You're not helping. I rarely do. Anyway, where were… 507-B disappears mid-sentence, roughly five seconds of silence. Well, now that our visitor has left, I have a question. Alright, did you two figure out the difference between your realities? Actually, I think we did. In his world, Abraham Lincoln was killed while sleeping by his vice president, instead of by General Lee. In this reality, Booth assassinated Lincoln. Oh, bugger. End log. Closing statement. Subsequent testing revealed that SCP-507's abilities have no biological basing and that severed pieces will still shift along with the main body. The SCP-507 of this reality reappeared three days later, and has not been informed of this incident. Forward. Below is an archive of all documented shifts undergone by SCP-507. Each of these entries are presented with their contents in the following order. Dimensional label, created upon discovery of a new reality, for ease of later reference. Retrieval, used for the documentation of any complications or anomalies in the recovery of SCP-507 post-shift. Description of reality and description of any after-effects caused by visiting said reality. Request. Listings of any special requests made by 507 upon return, or for noting any souvenirs retrieved from the shift. 1B7-55E-728 Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in a desert environment, and wandered around for roughly an hour before encountering another human. Said human was wearing a tanned leather overcoat, and was described as completely unshaven. Said man was extremely surprised to find a subject, and demanded that he be followed in order to lead it back to food and shelter. Subject originally began to follow the man, but intentionally lost contact with him upon noticing that his leather coat contained no seams or stitching. Request none. 9E2-66B-7HG5 Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in a forest habitat, with no signs of previous or current industrialization. No further anomalies were perceptible until the subject grew hungry, at which point it discovered that harvesting or eating the plant life would cause them to emit telepathic screams. Subject abstained from eating for the first day because of this, but became hungry enough on the second day onward to consume the flora in spite of the screams. Testing has shown no biological changes in the subject from this, but subject repeatedly affirms that it felt horrible for doing so. 
Request: None specifically, but subject adopted a gelatin and pudding-based diet for two and a half weeks after returning from this shift. J75-R63-3TF Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in a dimension with flipped genders. No notable differences besides this was discovered, although subject found issue with the fact that its female counterpart looks pretty much the same as the standard version. Request: None. 000-000-000 Invalid. Retrieval via tracking device. Plainclothes agent found subject sitting in an alleyway at. Subject was largely unresponsive upon retrieval, and remained so until the standard questioning phase. When asked where it went this shift, subject answered, Nowhere. I think I missed it this time. Subject experienced minor motor skill impairment and decreased activity levels for roughly a month after this shift. Request, a nightlight, and a wristwatch which makes an audible tick as the second hand moves. Both were approved. J7Q-53Y-8ST Retrieval Subject was found in its quarters, sprawled on the floor, attempting to gnaw through the sleeves of a straitjacket it was wearing. The jacket, leg restraints, and the loss of motor skills still present from the last shift led to the subject being unable to stand up or open the door to find assistance. Subject shifted while sleeping, and awoke restrained and lying in a hospital-grade bed. A nurse informed the subject that he was still a patient at the asylum, and was currently suffering from advanced stages of dementia. Subject was then sedated and spent the rest of the shift alternating between subconsciousness and total unconsciousness. Request disregarding get this thing off me. None. 9E2-66V-7HG5-2. Retrieval. Subject found in its quarters, balled up with its hands over its ears. Subject once again arrived in the forest habitat from 9E2-66V-7HG5. The flora seemed to have remembered subject's last visit, though, and they reacted by screaming for his entire four-day shift. Request A hug. Approved. 6K3-21B-IOS BN2-AL6-CTE Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in a derelict metropolitan area. Subject was unable to locate any other humans, but noted an overabundance of cats in every area visited. Said felines seemed no different from normal house cats, though, and spent most of the shift petting any who came near. During the standard examination procedure after retrieval, trace amounts of a Toxoplasma gondi variant were discovered on the subject's clothing, as well as larger amounts on his shoes. Further testing showed the subject had not yet been infected with the Toxoplasmosis variant, most likely attributed to the short time frame of this shift not allowing the subject to grow hungry and seek out food. All clothing and belongings that were on subject's person during this shift were incinerated and the subject forced to undergo special decontamination procedures in order to prevent any possibility of contagion. Request, a pair of rubber gloves. Denied, on the basis that hand protection would not have protected the subject from infection in any way. 125-28P-OS4-3 Retrieval, via tracking device. Subject was attempting to return on its own, but was making less progress than usual due to the discomfort of doing so. Subject once again arrived in a pitch black area, with muted breathing nearby. Subject decided to seek an exit this time via blind wandering. Subject eventually found itself at the mouth of a corridor with what appeared to be a light source at the end. Subject began to run towards the light upon noticing this. As it grew closer, the light suddenly grew in intensity, and the subject was exposed to searing pain. Subject passed out at this point, and only awoke after it had shifted back. Examination upon retrieval revealed that the subject's epidermis had been cleanly stripped down to the stratum granulosum in all areas open to sunlight, and down to the stratum lucidum in all areas covered by clothing. Request, none. But subject reappeared wearing a pair of large, heavy-tinted glasses. Subject did not notice that it was wearing these until they were pointed out, and supposed that they were probably why its eyes did not undergo the same process as its skin.
7F2-WA3-193 Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in an urban area, with no major changes as far as it could tell. Subject used the public computers of a library to search for differences between this dimension and ours, eventually finding out that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by his vice president in order to claim his position. This ultimately led to the presidency becoming a tribe-leader-like position, where the current holder is legally allowed to be challenged and overthrown by other suitable candidates. Subject noted, with great surprise, that this change did not do much to alter the times that most major presidents took and held the office. Many of the minor and or detrimental presidencies tended to end via bullet wounds, often in unlikely locales or from improbable angles, which deterred most from attempting coups at all. Request none. WS6-ECU-83D Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived at the mouth of a cave, surrounded by almost unbearable heat. Subject walked outside the cave for further investigation, to find that the area around it was a baked wasteland. Most of the heat appeared to emanate from two suns in the sky. The subject could not decide whether they were extremely large or extremely close to the planet. Upon further examination, the suns blinked and turned away, taking the heat with them. Subject spent rest of this shift as far back in the cave as possible. Request none. Q56-DRU-865 Retrieval Subject found in the cafeteria, masticating on what appeared to be Upon containment of Subject uttered the words, more, 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 before losing unconsciousness. Subject regained consciousness two hours later, expressing a strong desire for pudding. When questioned, subject claimed to see the biggest mound of pudding ever when questioned as to why it was masticating on Upon arrival, subject claimed to be eating a glob of pudding at the time. Subject reported seeing rolling around the hallways. Hallucinations passed within 24 hours. Request Pudding Request granted. F24-9S6-33C Retrieval Subject found in service tunnel 6R3BK without original equipment. Subject was wearing a simple uniform with a similar design to the current Foundation D-Class uniform. Subject shifted while dining in the cafeteria. Destination Dimension had an analog to the Foundation, with the facility in the same location, although internal layout has significant differences. Security responded to Subject as an intruder and detained it immediately. During this process, the subject was imprisoned and stripped of all equipment, including tracking device. For remainder of shift, subject underwent repeated questioning. The Foundation analog refused to accept subject's explanation of dimension hopping. Information gleaned from post-shift debriefing indicates that F24-9S6-33C has a Foundation analog in the Society for Containment of the Paranormal. This analog has a strong British influence, and is opposed by the Covert Occult Group and Church of the Mending God. Further details remain unclear as the Society refused to answer the subject's questions and only slipped details by assuming it knew them already. Request Replacement Equipment Request granted 4GT-F1Q-H17 Retrieval Subject was found by the cafeteria kitchen staff of site drenched, covered in mud, and suffering from severe hypothermia. Subject arrived in what appeared to be a large field during a rainstorm. Subject attempted to find shelter from the rain, but found none, remaining in the rain for the entire shift. After an unknown length of time, the subject reported seeing entities in the distance. Although the heavy rain obscured the subject from obtaining a detailed report of their appearances, the subject described them as being vaguely humanoid in shape. The entities began to slowly move towards the subject from all directions. Near the end of the shift, the subject reported hearing labored breathing from the nearest entities. Request a set of warm clothing. Approved. 2AW-9U2-E5T Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in mid-air, falling from an outdoor environment into a subterranean body of water at the bottom of a large cavern. 
Though admittedly experiencing a strong surge of adrenaline from this event, subject reported swimming a long way before reaching land. Subsequent observation revealed a giant hole in the ceiling of the cavern, through which subject had apparently fallen. Also reported were archways to other large caverns, most with shafts of sunlight visible indicating other surface collapses. Regular vertical grooves in the walls indicate possible excavation, despite the cavern's immense size. No other sign of life was observed. Before returning, Subject realizes the possibility of shifting back to our reality so far underground might cause it to be displaced in solid rock, and spent its remaining time frantically searching for a way back to the surface. When Subject succeeded, it discovered that the sinkholes were much more widespread than what had been visible from below ground. Request Diving Lessons Denied Two U U dash five I nine dash Q three D Retrieval Upon seeing Foundation personnel in Subject approached them and requests to be recontained, showing knowledge of SCPs that were of level three clearance. The length of time the subject was absent from our reality was notable, being roughly three months in length. However, during this time, it made several notable discoveries, including several SCPs uncontained by our reality's SCP Foundation, but contained by Universe 2UU-5I9-Q3D's equivalent. These SCPs have now been contained. Through this three-month time frame, the subject managed to become a member of 2UU-5I9-Q3D's SCP Foundation equivalent, working its way up the ranks far faster than would have been anticipated, assuming it had been a member of Foundation personnel on the same day. At the time of its return, he was apparently in the field, working to contain 2UU-5I9-Q3D's equivalent of SCP. Curiously, our Foundation has sent out a task force for precisely the same reason, on the same day. Further links between Universe 2UU-5I9-Q3D and our reality are being investigated. Request To be made a member of Site Personnel. Denied. 3JT-3MD-DIG Retrieval Subject retrieved via implanted tracker. Medevac required to site. Subject was immobile upon retrieval due to greatly increased body mass, measured at kilograms. Lead researcher approved emergency use of SCP-394 to keep it alive in order to obtain a report. Upon recovery, subject reported being surrounded by really big creatures resembling They quickly trapped him in a transparent container. It was then transported an unknown distance to a shiny surface, whereupon the creatures began to observe him. After approximately one day, tubes were inserted into unknown fluid which was not found upon examination. Subject reported that the tubes were removed shortly before the shift, and it observed approaching it, presumably for the purpose of extraction. Request Services of a personal trainer, Dr has agreed to let the subject borrow her workout tapes. Subject now displays a strong aversion to pudding. 9J3-Y6X-DTY Retrieval The subject was found hanging from his ankles in a tree on site. Subject was partially encased in insulated reflective titanium armor upon retrieval. The subject described the world it had arrived in as extra shiny, and stated that it was apprehended by law enforcement officials upon arrival. After being apprehended, the subject was transported to a nearby manufacturing facility and placed upside down on an assembly line where a series of metal sheets were shaped and cut to fit its body. It briefly had time to ask what was going on and was informed that the radiation from the sun was extremely dangerous and titanium reflective suits were required by law to prevent thermal radiation damage to any person or structure. Request Sunscreen and an eye exam Granted. 52J-079-3GH Retrieval via tracking device. Subject was found inside a padlocked metal shed behind an abandoned house on the outskirts of Subject arrived in a small room housing several dried corpses. Besides said corpses, the room was mostly bare. The only things subject noted were a single painless window and a light fixture on the ceiling which occasionally flickered. Subject attempted to rise to his feet 
but had difficulty doing so due to repeated and unpredictable surges of motion. Subject eventually made its way to the window, at which point it discovered that its room was actually a container suspended in mid-air by a large chain. Subject watched as similar containers passed by him, and as it passed by others, via a complex web of rails above it which the chains were attached to. Subject could see nothing besides this but darkness in all directions. Subject then tried to wait out its time in this dimension by falling asleep, but found it difficult due to a newly discovered quality of the corpses. During moments of darkness caused by flickering, the corpses rearranged themselves into poses which would be logical for living people during that particular moment. If the subject was looking out the window, the corpses would be crowded around him in an attempt to get a better view. If the subject was sitting, they would also be seated in a pattern to form a full circle. If the subject attempted to reach the light fixture, they would act as a support, seem to be in the process of pushing him upwards, etc. Requests, none. The area which the subject exited, though, has been cordoned off and is currently under surveillance. If no evidence of foundation-worthy phenomenon has been experienced by an anomalous tip will be sent to local law enforcement agencies so that they can discover the crime scene and take appropriate investigative actions on their own. YTF-5N2-Q00 Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in a crowded casino-like area. Subject noticed the only type of machine available was something similar to slots, but they apparently required no money to play and gave out nothing upon a win. Upon actually sitting down in front of one and trying it, the subject discovered that the machine dispensed a small slip of paper with writing on it upon every pull of the lever and spin of the symbols it displayed. Subject could discern no real pattern to what symbol would produce what type of note, but wrote down a list of its attempts and what it received from each just in case. Jewel Crescent Claw If given a slice of death, could you tell how large it was? Hammer Crescent Crescent a poor base leads to rush patch jobs. Crescent Hammer Jewel Deja Who? Claw Circle Hammer There are things worse than death. For one, not dying. Crescent Hammer Crescent They will always be someone to look after you. Crescent Jewel Crescent They're not that jolly, it's just stuck that way. Hammer Crescent Hammer There will always be something to look after. Claw 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 The future's looking bright. Request none. FN3-05P-KHC Retrieval Uneventful Subject appeared in a white corridor, with steel doors lining both walls. Each door had a keypad, a small speaker system, and a clipboard containing forms written in undecipherable characters. As the subject approached one door to examine said clipboard, the door's attached speaker turned on and began to address it. Subject was informed that the voice belonged to the person locked behind that specific door, and that he was wrongfully imprisoned, then left to die. The prisoner then pleaded with the subject to release him from his cell. Subject jokingly replied that he would free the prisoner if he promised not to stab the subject upon release. There was roughly a seven-second pause before the prisoner asked what stabbing was. After a moment of deliberation, the subject defined stabbing as the creation of a new orifice through the use of a pointed object. Another pause followed. The prisoner eventually affirmed that he would not stab the subject because all of his objects were very blunt. Subject naturally did not open that door or any of the others. Request none. I-52-37G-Z8M Retrieval via tracking device Subject within a holding cell of the police station, under charges of public indecency. Extraction was successfully made with no complications. Subject arrived in an area apparently undergoing a large snowstorm. Subject attempted to find shelter but could not find its way in the storm, and had almost succumbed to exposure by the time it was located and pulled into a cave by a man covered in protective furs. The man helped the subject out of his soaked clothing, although he did not have an extra set of garments. He led the subject to an underground hot spring his cave was connected to. When the man was sure the subject was regaining its strength, he removed his furs and entered the spring as well. Subject was extremely surprised to discover that the man was a second SCP-507. Subject noticed no obvious physical differences between itself and the double, although the alternate 507 had a pattern of tribal scarring across his torso, as well as at the bases of some of his limbs. 
Subject and the double remained in the cave and conversed with each other until the subject's shift ended. Request. Subject drew a replica of the alternate 507 scars from memory, and asked for any information on possible cultural or symbolic meaning behind the patterns. None was found, but Foundation researchers noted that lines were congruent with incision marks that would be made during a standard S43-51U-P09 retrieval via tracking device. Subject recovered in a cornfield in with unidentified brown liquid splattered on its cheek. A human heart with the words, I need you, written with the same liquid was discovered in Subject's hand. Subject claimed that said object was not in its possession during the shift, and does not know how it came into its possession. Researchers are attempted to identify the liquid. Subject arrived in pitch black darkness, with the sound of crying nearby. Upon activating its flashlight, Subject discovered the smiling man from previous shifts leaning towards him. Brown liquid leaked from around its sunglasses. Smiling Man pushed its face closer to the subjects and uttered the phrase, Why did you do this? Smiling Man then wiped off a portion of the brown liquid from its eyes with its hand, and began caressing subject's cheek with it. Subject forcefully pushed Smiling Man away. Subject observed that the Smiling Man's business suit contained several holes, with brown liquid trailing down from them. Subject drew its firearm and pulled the trigger, however, for unknown reasons the pistol did not fire. Smiling Man began slowly walking towards Subject. Subject ran for approximately ten minutes and spent the rest of the shift huddled in a corner. Request, a more reliable pistol, denied as the cause of the error is unknown. 9E2-66B-7HG5-3 Retrieval, via tracking device, Subject was discovered 7 kilometers or 6.4 miles northeast of the facility. Subject shifted while reading in its quarters. Subject found itself returned to the forest habitat containing telepathic trees. The trees remained silent upon its entry to the environment. The subject admitted that despite its previous experiences within the environment, it was curious about the absence of any human habitation. The subject propelled itself to the highest ground it could find in order to see over the tree canopy. The subject found a clearing at the top of a hill. Subject reported seeing a huge, semi-translucent blue dome covering the entire forest. The tree canopy extended out to the edge of the dome with foliage so thick that looking up and through it was unfeasible. Subject reported itself to see the dome slightly off-center, suggesting it was not underneath the direct metal. Request none. 5Z4-75T-7YB Retrieval. Subject was found prone and unresponsive in its quarters. Subject was bleeding significantly. Several deep gashes were discovered in the left side of the subject, just under the armpit. The claw marks extended to the bottom of the rib cage. Subject received traditional first aid and was committed to the on-site infirmary. The subject woke up on a snow-covered plain. Subject did not have its backpack on hand at the time of the shift, having been asleep. All that went with it was its bedsheets and pajamas. Subject reports having seen a TV show of how to survive in a cold environment before the shift. It attempted to build a crude snow cave using its hands when it was interrupted by a large white bear. This is the extent of its recollection. Request, a proper weapon, granted. Losing subject to a non-anomalous polar bear would be a waste of Foundation resources and an embarrassment. Subject shall receive a knife, sheath, and belt and is required to keep these items on its person at all times. 3GH-14H-9UX Retrieval Recontained in the kitchen missing left hand and using expletives in an uncontrolled fashion. The subject was returned to the infirmary. The subject transitioned into a dimension very similar to our own at first glance. The subject was apprehended by Foundation personnel in the infirmary and questioned about his small canines. The subject admitted to not knowing what that meant but quickly worked it out after his interviewer opened its mouth and pointed to a set of large fangs located either side of its incisors. The interviewer also commented on the subject's roundish body shape, which was considered unusual and fascinating in this dimension. Despite these differences, the subject described the creatures who interviewed it as kind. They proceeded to bring the subject a large amount of food. The subject noted a distinct lack of anything green in the meal offered to him. When later told to elaborate by Foundation personnel, he stated, It was all meat. After eating the meal, two of the creatures containing the subject and their equivalent of the infirmary escorted him into a small room nearby containing a locket hanging on the opposite wall. 
They told the subject to remove his clothes and stand in front of the locket. After the subject had done its order, they opened the locket and exposed it to a green orb for approximately eight minutes. The subject noted the lack of any scar tissue on his left side and a strong feeling of general well-being. The next day a creature came to him and asked for a small portion of his skin and musculature in order to study genetic differences. To this the subject responded with, only if you provide me with another delicious meal. The creature was visibly excited by this outcome. A small biopsy was conducted on the subject's upper right thigh. The subject described this experience as painful but totally worth it. A huge amount of unspecified meat was delivered to the subject upon completion of the biopsy. The subject was then released to explore the facility. For the next month and a half, the creatures continued to supply the subject with mounds of meat and engage in an amiable conversation. The subject acquired 14 kilograms or 30.8 pounds of fat during this time. On April 16, 2015, the subject was escorted to the kitchen equivalent. It was then put on a chopping block and its left hand was removed. Request a replacement hand. Granted. 888-91T-710 Retrieval Uneventful Subject arrived in a large opaque dome filled with plants, without sign of human habitation. Subject stated that walking was difficult and uncomfortable. Upon further investigation, the subject found a window displaying what was described as pitch black with earth on the horizon. Several minutes later, a tall humanoid encountered the subject, inquiring about his comparative short stature. Subject replied, asking where he was. The humanoid stated that they were in Base 12, Oxygen and Vegetable Wing. Subject asked what Earth was doing in the sky. Humanoid appeared puzzled and responded, That is the moon, gesturing to Earth. A short argument ensued and a humanoid departed. Subject noted that after the Earth set, a rocky gray landscape became visible, becoming identifiable as the lunar surface after an hour or so. Subject attempted to explore more of its surroundings, but shifted back to our reality shortly after setting out. Request One camera. Subject stated the view was breathtaking. Denied. 7J0-175-35X Retrieval Subject was recontained on the roof of the facility, after having fallen approximately 5 meters. Subject shifted while attempting to fall asleep. Subject arrived in large body of water believed to be fresh water by the description of its taste. Subject swam upward estimated 35 meters before reaching the surface of the water and beginning to tread. Subject noted several dark shapes moving in the water beneath it and bright lights in the distance, but did not attempt to approach either. Subject reportedly found breathing extremely difficult. Subsequent physical tests indicated the subject had ingested substantial amounts of methane during the shift. Request, a tank of breathing gas as part of its equipment. Approved. 99P-UT1-24J Retrieval Subject was found in the location in which it had left, curled up and crying violently. Subject screamed, why did I have to go, when an attempt was made to interact with it, and suffered from severe depression for several days thereafter. Agents described a beautiful smell coming from him. Subject landed in a place he could only describe as impossibly beautiful. Subject stated that it was like the best parts of every place all put together. The beauty was so overwhelming that he had no desire to move. When he began to become thirsty and hungry, plants apparently extended vines and shot a liquid into his mouth which he described as the best anything he had ever drunk ever. Sweet and rich and everything all at once. After roughly one day, subject having never looked at his watch during this time, had no idea of the length, a humanoid female subject's age unexpectedly encountered subject. They had a long conversation, subject described her with, I know I'm sounding repetitive here, but she was the most amazing person I ever met. With some reluctance, subject stated that they had been about to kiss when the shift ended. Subject then had to be prevented from committing suicide. Physical tests after successful psychiatric treatment indicated subject was considerably more physically fit and had gained roughly 10 IQ points, despite having done no significant exercise or studying during the shift. Request, various foods, beverages, and pictures of women widely regarded as very physically attractive. The subject considered all granted requests unsatisfactory, making statements such as, it's not the same, and no, no, not like that. Subject then requested a way to stay in a universe permanently after having arrived there, and was reminded that that was impossible.
6A5-93W-132 Retrieval Subject returned malnourished and suffering from the effects of an unknown toxic substance, which it soon recovered from. Later analysis showed the substance to be a venom containing high percentages of silicon. A small silicon-based crystalline creature was hanging from the subject's finger when the subject returned. This specimen subsequently died of unknown causes, possibly starvation. Subject shifted to a dimension which primarily contained crystals of various sizes and hues. The sun was described by the subject as smaller and bluer than ours. The ground was covered in sand, also of various dull colors. The subject noted that many of the larger crystals were moving slowly and appeared to be alive. It also saw smaller creatures which scuttled around quite rapidly, and seemed to be composed of crystal. The subject spent some time searching for water, which it found. It noted that there seemed to be considerably more of the smaller crystalline animals near the water. Shortly before the subject returned, it was attacked by one of the small creatures. The subject described both the larger and smaller creatures as both looking and behaving similarly to crustaceans. Request food and water that doesn't taste like sand. Granted. 7XJ-HG5-77B Retrieval Subject reappeared in its quarters, highly agitated. D-3762 and the handcuffs binding the two together were reported missing. Subject before the shift was handcuffed to D-3762, a convicted serial killer. Subject was instructed to terminate D-3762 if either of them were placed in mortal danger. 507 shifted to a dimension where a second ice age was occurring on Earth. Immediately after landing, D-3762 and the subject was captured by agents of a post-apocalyptic SCP Foundation. The former was immediately recognized as a D-Class and was swiftly terminated by an individual claiming to be Agent 507 was placed in a cell in the lower levels of a facility called Site. Subject recalls that from the interrogation, the agents believed it was a junior researcher attempting to help D-3762 escape from the Foundation. During the interrogation, the subject shifted back into our dimension. Request Replacement Gear Granted T-34-DE2-04F Retrieval Subject was found in Sector A highly restricted area. Subject was swiftly removed. Subject shifted to a dimension with a world covered in water. Subject then equipped the scuba gear and decided to see what was below the water. Subject descended for approximately three minutes and was believed to travel 50 meters down before seeing the ocean floor. The floor was covered with abandoned buildings and several skeletons. Buildings were highly corroded and covered with moss. The subject searched the underwater city for three minutes when the subject spotted three black, fish-like creatures moving towards him at an estimated speed of 10 meters per second. Subject removes his knife and firearm before shifting back into our dimension. Request a pair of binoculars. Approved. Addendum 507-3B-00 Due to a particularly trying encounter with Several documents in the archives have been altered, corrupted, or technically never existed. Document 507-3B appears to have been affected by this, and is currently being rebuilt using backup files, references, and respectively. Subject matter may occasionally increase, decrease, or undergo modifications in light of this. Doctor.